Hello everyone, my name is Rochelle Innocent and I'm the founder and CEO of Project Purpose. Welcome to our channel. Our community is focused on fostering the intellectual and character development in children. We do this through our parent-child workshops that are focused on four themes, autonomy, self-efficacy, compassion, and self-concept in order to cultivate grit, perseverance, and resilience in each child. And we are so thrilled to be offering one of the first of its kind, digital, virtual, and continuous learning environments, enabling parents and children to connect from all around the world. At Project Purpose, our our overarching mandate is to renew and rebuild family, community, and relationships. Our different social media platforms provide us with an opportunity to have discussions on all topics that relate to family, community, and relationships with ourselves as well as with others, with a primary focus on mental health and education. More precisely, the ways that the institutions of mental health and education have played a role and currently play a role in our societies at large. These discussions and debates provide us with an opportunity to think critically about what needs to change within these structures for us to live up to our bold slogan, support, protect, and empower each child through youth-focused development, better known as leadership in juvenescence. We recognize that in valuing our children's leadership potential, this also translates as recreating and co-creating environments both socially and politically that will enable our children to thrive. For those of you who are particularly keen on the topic, we also write thought pieces every other Sunday and we just dropped a thought piece this past Sunday. So be sure to meander over to the website and check out our online content. If it is the case that you are looking for a listening alternative, well, we're available on 10 different podcast platforms for your listening leisure and we've provided you with access to the links in the description down below. Now, as is the convention, be sure to subscribe, hit that post notification bell and join the game changer your community and if you like our conversations and you want to keep them going like comment and share this segment let's get into it Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another segment here on Project Purpose. For those of you who are new, we cover topics that relate to mental health, mental wellness, and education on a week-by-week -week basis. And this week, our topic is education. And in addressing our topic on education this week, we're going to be talking about some of the shortfalls of prescriptive education. And that's essentially the core essence of the model of education in our educational systems here in North America, and largely in part for most societies across the world is fairly prescriptive. Now we're going to talk about how that hinders on our ability to foster autonomy within our children and how that translates by way of hindering their ability to be self-directed in their learning even into adulthood and why this is something we should all care about. So first I think Let's talk a little bit about what I mean when I say prescriptive. So when I say prescriptive, I mean it's very much instructor driven. There isn't a whole lot of room for critical thinking, which is one thing. I mean, it's a problem, but not the full problem. But there's a lot of direction, right? And, and, and with the direction that's given in a prescriptive environment, any deviation from that direction is corrected and, and sometimes very severely depending on not just the educator, but also the curriculum, depending on just the style and the conditioning taking place within that specific environment and also like if we take society and how society and culture and tradition layers on top of this prescription style education it really hinders our ability to be explorative and by way of explorative it hinders our confidence it stunts the growth of our confidence and being self-directed and in pursuing self-discovery without feeling self-conscious or feeling apprehensive in terms of how that pursuit is going to translate and I think that that's really an issue and so for those of you who've been following for a while you know that I do have an e-module for children's focus on autonomy. And autonomy is a core intellectual and character development pillar within Project Purpose because we believe that for any person to be a fully contributing member of society, they have to be comfortable self-directing their journey and self-directing their journey by way of making choices, dealing with the consequences that come with those choices and being able to weigh the pros and cons, the risks and rewards to their own choices without requiring external validation, without requiring consent 
defenses, and even in cases where it creates an environment where they're breaking away from status quo. And we believe at Project Purpose that that's really important to create a foundation within our society of people who push the needle on things, people who are unconventional, people who are inventive, who are creative, who are innovative, or people who are comfortable stepping in and outside of that box. And autonomy is a big way in terms of how that develops and how that translates in, in each individual, which is why it's something that we think is really important to focus on in children today. So given the fact that our education system is very prescriptive and this counteract with the development of autonomy in our children, and this is the kind of education that really does need to happen at home. So I wanna talk about three perspectives. So three tips, three things to keep in mind as you think about how you're going to be mindful by way of how you nurture and protect your child's growing sense of autonomy in terms of how they make decisions and how they treat and value the decisions that they make in an environment that really does have quite strong punitive responses to deviating from the prescribed instructions and how with the cultivation of autonomy, we need to really recognize that in giving someone the permission to drive their own learning, it means that we need to be okay moving away from a prescriptive learning environment. And so why is this important? When we are raised and conditioned in a prescriptive educational environment, this also fosters a fear of failure. It fosters self-consciousness and competitiveness and high degrees of comparative behavior. And we're always doing things with the intention of outperforming or of those who are outperforming us potentially rather than focusing on the actual learning objective, the actual goal. So the self-consciousness, this fear of failure, this fear of judgment really takes away from the quality, the caliber of learning and also the enjoyment of learning. And many of us come out of school with a deep hatred for learning or at least a deep disdain for learning because of just the things that took place when we really did have the right heart in place to learn something. But then, you know, there was a negative experience that came out of that. So we want to try to think about how we decrease the amount of those experiences and really foster environments where learning is an enjoyable activity because we're moving away from learning in competitive and performance-based environments. So three quick tips in terms of how we curb this phenomenon. The first one is encourage self-direction at home. Encourage it, promote it. So when your child is curious about something, if they have a question and there's an opportunity to provide them with the license to figure it out on their own, encourage them to do so. Feed into their sense of confidence and their ability to think up questions and then generate decisions that will help them figure out the answer to those questions. So I think self-discovery is something that we can figure out a way to develop within our children in our home environments and it takes longer. Learning is a process, it takes longer. There's not a whole lot of ways to cut the time that comes with the learning curve. And I know that we are very focused on being efficient and on doing things quickly, but where we do not want to cut corners is really on building out this principle of self-direction and recognizing that that involves being patient, that involves giving them space to figure things out on their own, giving them space to not only ask questions, but to generate decisions and different pathways to figure out ways to answer those questions independently, as opposed to just having someone, you know, feed them an answer that they regurgitate, but don't fully comprehend. So I think fostering an environment at home that really encourages and promotes self-direction is super critical and super important. The second point that I think is very important when we move away from prescriptive and more towards self-directed learning is recognizing that the way that we think and frame the objective when it comes to self-directed learning is less about right and wrong. The information that we will retain, that we will come into contact with when we're self-directed or learning is information that is relative. And even if culturally, traditionally, there is a perspective or a, or a point of view that the majority of people gravitate towards or are comfortable with, I think when we cultivate self-discovery, when we cultivate valuing self-discovery in children, we need to recognize that when it comes to information that is relative, where there are more than one potential responses that people can take on, multiple points of view. We need to create environments that help our children develop a certain degree of comfort with relativity, with answers that are not black and white, nor have the nature of ever being black and white, and being comfortable in that space of gray. 
a lot of children grow up into being adults that require a black and white framework to navigate through the world around them when much of our world, much of the views, the ideals, the ideas that are discussed even like on a day-to-day -day basis, whether you're discussing them at home in your backyard or you're discussing them in a formal academic setting are relative points of view. So they're just different points on a spectrum of truth or probability of truth. And we all need to get more comfortable with that. And I think that that's more aligned with reality, right? A lot of people who have a very black and white way of viewing the world around them have created a reality that comforts them, but isn't necessarily aligned with reality in and of itself. When truly, like when you get to the roots of it, it's a very ambiguous, very relative topic of discussion. So I think when we try to move from prescriptive education to more self-discovery based education, we need to really instill this value of recognizing and developing a comfort with relativity, recognizing that, hey, like based on the information that you have, based on the information that you've gathered, this can be your perspective and your point of view. Give yourself permission to change your point of view later on. There is no harm, no foul in evolving, growing, maturing, and with different life experiences, adopting a different point of view on something. We don't have to be doggedly held to a point of view for the rest of our lives. It is not a prison sentence. And when it comes to relativity, when it comes to information, when it comes to ideas, when it comes to the ways things are done, when it comes to how things could be done in the future, we all need to just recognize that status quo is a way of taking something that is relative, making it black and white, to make everything seem easier to kind of comprehend. But just because it feels easier and there's not a lot of work by way of cognitive workload, if you're kind of taking on that approach, doesn't mean it's helpful to you in the long run. And I think that that's a really important value to instill. And lastly, because we're working against the grain here, is praise is super important. Praise them through every step of that self-directed journey. So in self-direction, we're going to come up against walls, right? We're gonna realize that we took a step that didn't align us to the objective that we're looking for. And we need to praise that, right? Because in self-directed learning, all knowledge, all information gathering is valuable, right? So if we gather information, but it brought us further away from our objective, we still see the value in that. Or if we're gathering information is bringing us closer to objective, but not quite there yet, then there's still value in that. And I think with prescriptive learning, there's a lot of discouraging narratives around, oh, well, you didn't get it right this time, right? Which really hinders someone's even desire to continue on that self-directed journey. But to create a sense of wonder with self-discovery, we need to encourage them to lean into the full process. So lean into where you know, this wasn't exactly what I was hoping to look for, but this is what I discovered. And with this discovery, this is what I now know. And with this knowledge, this is how I'm going to reposition myself to better align with the objective that I'm looking for. As you're developing that muscle, as you're developing comfort with really navigating and discovering information on their own, they need that raise so that we build a very solid foundation that they can build on as they start to tackle more complex and more long-term objectives, right? So like, let's help them with different objectives that are easily accomplished in the short term, build that confidence so that as they get older and the things that they want to discover requires more time, involves a higher degree of complexity, has higher amounts of relativity, they're still comfortable navigating in those environments. In any case, that is the topic of discussion today. I hope that it was interesting to you and I hope that you see that there is really a lot to say about prescriptive education and why we should move away from prescriptive education, especially if we're hoping to cultivate autonomy in our children. And if you do see the significance against and the importance in intellectual and character development and giving your children the tools to think critically in order to be a contributing member to our society, then I think you'll agree that fostering a deep value and a sense of self-discovery is super critical and super important. And here's just the point of view. This is just a point of reference to relay why I really do reinforce that autonomy is so important and building an educational environment that aligns with cultivating and fostering autonomy is critically important as well. Now, before letting you go, I would be be remiss if I didn't let you know that we will be going live at least twice a month every month for the foreseeable future on our Facebook page. Now these events are paid events and they give us an opportunity to cultivate the critical thinking and the life skills required to derive more meaning and fulfillment out of life. So if that's something that seems interesting to you then definitely be sure to check out our areas of discussion. We have different topics that we plan on covering for the remainder of the 2022 calendar year so RSVP as soon as you can and if you do see yourself participating in our 
our Game Changer community on an ongoing basis, then I suggest that you purchase one of our package plans. Yes, so we do have package plans available that give you unlimited access to our live events, but also access to our workshops and webinars over and above these live events. So definitely check it out and we look forward to seeing you in our sessions. All of that to say, thank you so much for joining in today and I look forward to chatting with you soon.